the most f fundamental and uh, first step to take in tackling our, or in building our P and K levels on farm is to have our nutrient management plan completed uh, on a yearly basis. So that's done every sp early spring with our Chagas advisor. My approach with soil fertility starts with um, a soil test. When I first came here three years ago, um, the first thing we undertook was to do a full soil test across the whole farm to identify where our soil nutrient levels lie and to be able to pull together a plan to start tackling our most limiting factors. At the get-go, we, we have relatively low soil fertility here on the farm. Um, but the most limiting factor and the most cost effective thing to tackle first was uh, the pH of the soils. So we started off with spreading lime and we have probably spread over 190 tonne of lime to date over the last three years. I've seen significant improvements since putting, since starting the lime in program. The most noticeable thing is when I first go out with uh, application of nitrogen or my P's and K's, before, with lower pHs, this, the response was just that little bit slower. I would get a response, but I can definitely see the difference and particularly see the difference in growth rates, early growth rates from applications of fertilizers after spreading lime. Building P and K on farm, we're pretty much in index ones and twos for both across the farm. And it is a difficult task to do, particularly with low cash flows at present in the, on the farm, but I suppose we're targeting little and often with P's and K's to ensure that the grass has what it needs. And then to add to that as well, um, I've undertaken the P allocation course um, to give myself extra P allocation to help build P. Um, and I've also got the opportunity to import some dairy slurry locally that will allow me then to build my P's and K's in a little bit more of a cost-effective manner. Priority would be given to uh, silage fields for raising the indexes for P and K first, um, generally because this is where the silage is coming off, so that's where the slurry needs to go back on. Um, I get the most response as well from uh, building, those cover building those indexes on the silage first and foremost, and then as money allows, we'll build P and K in the grassland. Um, and if we take covers, if we take surplus silage off our grazing ground, um, we will go out with slurry after that as well to replenish any nutrients that were taken off. Silage production on farm, I have two separate systems for silage production here on farm. Um, I have your more traditional grass silage based systems, which would be targeted towards my suckler cows. And then I have a uh, red clover silage ground, which will be targeted towards my young stock. Um, for the grass silage, we are looking at 100 units of nitrogen, 20 units of P and 100 units of K applied before first cut. That's an amalgamation of cattle slurry, 0730 and your protected urea plus sulfur to build up to our requirements. And then on the red clover, uh, silage ground we're just going with our cattle slurry to uh, back onto the ground after each cut to maintain and build the soil fertility in those so there's no nitrogen applied to those at all.